can see her lying back in her sack. Hey, happy homebrew Wednesday. What's up, fellow brew tubers? Um, this one's probably, I say it's going to be short. It's probably going to be short because there's no uh, brew day footage or anything. Um, but I am kind of excited um, because I, uh, as you're going to see in a minute, uh, my um, Vienna Lager that I'm doing for a competition is just about finished uh, in its second stage of lagering the, the diacetyl rest. So I'm using the brewlosophy method where you go three weeks, although the lagering is going to go a lot longer than uh, a week. So uh, probably tomorrow I'll start ramping it down. It was at a, well you'll see here, right here. Here's a quick peek into my Vienna Lager. That's after the diacetyl rest, so now I gotta start. I gotta check the gravity, make sure it's good. And it was uh, started out at 1062 on the 8th, it was at 1030. So I think I'm probably where I need to be right now. Should be around 1017 or lower. Uh, we'll see. And there you have it, right at 1017. But you know what? This thing's still kind of bubbling a little bit. After I messed around with it, let's see if I can get it to bubble. Yeah, there it goes. So I think I might let it sit for like another day or so. If I can get it down a little lower. So it was at a 1017, and to be honest, this the sample. It's uh, you know, it's all cloudy and murky right now. I got to transfer it into, uh, but it's got the look. It's got a nice color. Look at that. Let me see. If, probably better if I hold it this way. Yeah, nice, nice color to it. Imagine that clear. That looks like a Vienna Lager. Um, smells like a Vienna Lager. Tastes like a Vienna Lager. I got the slight um, diacetyl in it. I think could just be my could be in my head. No, that's not there. It was in my head. Um, so now I'm gonna start. Uh, yeah. So I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna transfer it into my secondary. I got that already, already sanitized, and um, then I'll start uh, lowering the temperature on it a uh, degree or two every 12 hours. I think is what it calls for. Get it down to about 36, and just let it sit there forever and and clear out. Don't have to put any more hops on it or anything like that. So I should be able to get it pretty clear. Uh, and then, yeah, I'll keep it there and keep it cold until I got to bottle it up and uh, send it off. So speaking of bottling, I did some, did some bottling last night. Bottled about a case of uh, various beers. Uh, one of those is the collab beer that I did with Tyler. Uh, the other one is the, um, the second batch of Vernal Equinox that I did. This time I used the, the, proper, uh, the proper hops. Uh, Galaxy and um, uh, Equino, Equino or HBC 366, whatever it is. So, man, this is good. Yeah, and that thing gets gets carved. It's gonna, it's not gonna be bad. So uh, right now on tap, I've got Native Transplant. I've, I've got maybe a bottle left of the Trash ESP. That thing is about, about kicked. And the Vernal Equinox, like I said, I bottled up about half of each of Tap 1 and Tap 3 last night. So uh, And then I got Dreyer's, uh, Dreyer's Revenge. And if you remember, Dreyer's Abomination was a, I called it a Vienna Pale. Or a v, I'm sorry, a Vienna, a Vienna Ale. Vienna Pale, a v, Vienna Ale. Um, instead of a Vienna Lager, and that's why I called it Dreyer's Abomination, because Dreyer was the guy from uh, Vienna, who uh, he and some guy from Austria came up with a, no, wait a minute, he and a guy from Germany came up with the Marzen slash Vienna Lager style. Um, so I called it Dreyer's Abomination, because at the time I didn't have a, I didn't have this temp controller, so uh, I wasn't able to control fermentation, so I just used a, used a alias. Uh, a, a ale yeast. I had the ingredients for a for a Vienna lager. Everything except for the everything except for the yeast, and uh, it actually came out pretty good. One change that I did, I had Gold Pills Vienna in there, which kind of gave it a. I think it gives it that kind of graham cracker, uh, toasty, you know, cookie kind of flavor that a lot of you guys picked up on that tasted it. Um, but 
this is going to be a no shit lager, Vienna lager. And, uh, you know, a bit of a trivia. Um, anybody have any idea? I'll, I'll put the question out here and give you a couple seconds to see if you come up with it. Anybody have any idea who the largest producer of Vienna lager is? Um, you can go check Wikipedia or Google, see if I'm wrong. But most of you would, well, you're not going to. You're not going to say Vienna or Germany now because I've kind of given it away. But I believe, and go go check me on this, uh, but uh, Mexico is actually the biggest producer of Vienna lager. I know I like Negra Modella. That's a, that's a Vienna lager. Uh, but I think it had something to do with when the Europeans came and colonized and came to Mexico. Uh, they brought their, their style of beer with them, and the, the Mexicans uh, really, uh, you know, took it up and, you know, produced some pretty good Vienna lagers now. So, so I don't know. Maybe I should call it El Dreher's Revenge. Anyway, um, what else is going on? So I've got the house by myself this week. My wife and kids went down to Grammys down in uh, South Carolina. We got a we got our second house in in uh, in Myrtle Beach. Um, so at some point, uh, if we ever decide we want to, you know, I, I don't think we'll move to Myrtle Beach, but it's nice having the house down there. And Grammy lives there. So uh, uh, anyway, the they went down for a visit, so they left me all to my lonesome, and, you know, what do I do when I'm at my lonesome? Man, eh, you know, I'm thinking about getting a dartboard for this wall here in my pub because, you know, all of the rest of the rooms are good. If you look around, you know, I've got, got my TV, got my fireplace going on, and I put a little fly, a little fly, uh, fly rod or a fly reel, is that what it's called, for fly fishing, up on the top there. You know, got my wall of fame here. Got the telephone booth. And then of course, I uh, got the bar. But what I don't have is a dartboard right there. Oh, you like the little stormtrooper picture? I love that thing. Uh, but what I don't have is a dartboard. So I'm gonna put the dartboard right there. And you know, so, so literally it'll be, uh, see if you can see this. Yeah, it'll be right in front of the bar. I'll have a dartboard right there. And I think that beam won't be too low that I can actually play some darts. So, uh, so, uh, wife is gone. I'm going to go out tonight with a friend, have some dinner, and maybe we'll swing by Dick's Sporting Goods, or maybe I'll go to Amazon and get one. I don't know. Got to buy that before she gets back, though, and tells me not to spend any money. Uh, so we got that. Um, uh, cool, exciting update for the Dean's Pub and the house in general. I had to meet with the, uh, AC guys, because our AC is about to go out. So we had to replace it anyway, plus my wife is putting a, an addition on the house. Uh, so we needed a new AC. So part of the deal is, uh, the bad thing about this pub down here in my, in my pub, uh, in my, uh, brew kitchen next door is that we don't have AC. So in the summer it gets freaking hot and, uh, I really have to work hard at staying down here watching, you know, uh, baseball and drinking beer. Uh, I really have to work hard at it cause I'm sweating my butt off. So, um, we're gonna put, uh, somehow they're gonna do an indoor unit that's gonna go, it'll be separate from the rest of the AC. It's gonna go over in the, in the game room where my son hangs out and then we're gonna feed the ducks off uh, to the brew kitchen and to here in the pub. So uh, no more uh, running the uh, dehumidifiers. The air will be conditioned. It's gonna be nice and cool down here. And uh, you know, it'd be really good for uh, um, fermentation because that's kind of a challenge in the middle of the summer. It gets pretty warm and you know, it's hard to keep that perfect 68 degree uh, ale uh, fermentation temp. So uh, I'm gonna be set once we do that. So I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, the, the engineers are gonna come here on the 17th uh, on Monday and uh, kind of get the, get, the, get the plan. And then I guess they do it in a day. So we should be good. Gotta hurry up and get it done. It's starting to get warm here. Uh, what else? Oh, okay, so update, medical. Looks like uh, I got one last brew or I don't know, it depends on depends on timing, but I may only have one brew left in me. Um, uh, I'm doing a brew with Josh uh, Hoover, our collaboration uh, uh, brew. Uh, I think we're going to do it Saturday. I might try to see if he, hey Josh, if you're watching, I might want to see if you want to do it uh, Friday evening or Friday afternoon instead of, instead of Saturday. Uh, I'm thinking about playing some golf on Saturday. It's my last day of freedom before my wife gets back, so uh, anyway, hit me up. Let me know if that's a that's a doable thing for you. I know we got a time difference, or 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 maybe we just don't do a, a concurrent brew. But anyway, um, so yeah, so I found out that uh, I've been having some pain. You know, some of you guys been watching my channel know that I had a surgery. You know, right about here uh, last March. 
because uh, I had uh, radial pain shooting in my left arm and it ended up being a uh, uh, herniation of, uh, it, was, it was a whole bunch of things. They had basically go in and pull out some vertebrae, you know, take out the spacer, put a fake spacer in, put a plate with some screws. Now I got four screws in my throat. And, uh, but when I woke up, the pain in my arm was completely gone. Uh, well, now it shifted over to my right arm, and we uh, had an MRI done the other day and uh, found out that I have two herniated discs below where the, where the surgery was. Uh, so I'm going to have to get another surgery. Uh, so anyway, as soon as the neuro neurosurgeon gets back off vacation tomorrow, he's going to pick the earliest slot he has for me to go in, and they're going to do a reattack, and looks like I'll be out of commission again. Uh, shouldn't be too long, but, you know, It'll be at least a, at least a month uh, before I can brew again, and then we'll be heading to England. So it might not even be until August or September before I get to brew. So this might be my last my last brew day for a while. So I know I owe some of you guys some beers, uh, Chris. Uh, uh, I, I owe you a beer uh, from Brick and Mortar. Uh, I mean, I owe you a beer mail. Uh, Got to send Tyler some stuff here in the next couple of days. Uh, uh, Andrew Cooper, I'm sending you a, a beer mail, and uh, I'll try to get get out a few more uh, before I go under the knife. So uh, Mash Paddle said he would come visit me again like he did last time and, and bring me some beer. Probably not a whole case of homebrew. Maybe he'll get some local beers, or we'll just hang out and have lunch. It was just cool to see him. So anyway, I don't think I'm going to be out of commission for like 30 days. I'm probably going to, you know, spend overnight in the hospital and then take a few days and uh, get back to, and then probably work from home for a week or two and, and then... Uh, um, get you know get back to the get back to the drill so anyway that's my homebrew wednesday for this week hey uh enjoyed uh watching all of y'all's frequently frequently asked beer questions um great idea for tasty niche or tasting niche tasting niche um uh thank you for uh putting that out there it's been fun watching everybody's stories and uh hey have yourself a happy homebrew and have a very 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 good happy homebrew wednesday cheers and losing again